DMs are supposed to guide the players through a story, weaving the interests of everybody at the table into one moving narrative. Which is what made it very surprising when this DM was seemingly jealous of OP and tried to use D&D to get his girlfriend to leave him. The only problem is, he exposed himself as a total creep. So of course, this behavior backfires on him big time. Roll post. Should the DM get to decide your character's fate? Recently, our campaign ended. The DM told me prior to the session that he had written an ending for a character I had retired due to previous issues caused by this DM. I love this character. He may not have been the most complex or had the richest backstory I've ever had, but he was one of the most fun to play. He had decided that this character would be killed off post-game. Not only that, but the character's wife would be the one to accidentally do it. His wife was played by my partner, who quit for the same reason. My question is, is it normal for the DM, rather than the players, to wrap up their characters' stories? OP is leaving a lot of information out of this post, and we'll get to that soon, but let's address what we have right now. No, this is not normal at all, player input is critical. If you incorporate the players and their feedback into the story correctly, it should be pretty easy for the DM and player to wrap up their characters' stories. But if you want to ensure you don't disappoint, you could let the players do the whole epilogue themselves. But like I said earlier, there's about to be a game-changing information injection. Shortly after this post was made, there was another. Is this normal behavior for a DM? Hi, my partner made a post earlier but left out a few important details that I would like an opinion on. Last week our campaign ended. We had been playing for the better part of a year with a set of characters who were married, played by both my partner and I, and we grew very, very attached. This was our forever DM and we were new to D&D beforehand. After playing one-shots with other people, we began to notice some things that weren't great. The DM told me that my character was to become pregnant by her ghost ancestors and that my boyfriend can't know. She was over-sexualized and heavily forced into the gender stereotype of a woman. The DM said she had to have a mother figure or be a mother herself. Most of the character development and attention went from the DM to her. None of the other players had nearly as much focus on their characters. The DM constantly ignored our backstories, however basic they were, and changed them to fit his mindset. So, if my partner and I didn't specify our characters were together, or in the past when they weren't, the DM would try and force one of us to be gay and force to romance slash marry one of his NPCs, despite our protests. Or a surprise that we were both siblings, despite stating that we both knew our parents. Somewhere in that word salad was a very important plot point, and that is that her boyfriend can't know about the weird pregnancy incest plotline. Some level of secret keeping is all fun and good in D&D, but just keep that little plot point in mind as we continue the story. When I read these stories, I like to put myself in OP's shoes to better understand their point of view. But with the DM trying to force a gay romance, I just think of a DM physically sitting across the table from me like, Hey, you're gay by the way, here's your starter pack. And he gives me a marriage certificate and a boyfriend who also has no idea what's going on. Anyway, we had to stop playing our married characters because after voicing the discomfort of my character being pregnant, with debuffs and detailed descriptions of the symptoms, the DM decided to describe in extreme detail a miscarriage, have my character branded as a punishment, and take away her magic. We had to stop playing these characters because we physically could not continue. This was not something we discussed beforehand. My question is, is this normal for a dungeon master? <laughs> You see, I have a slight suspicion you might know the answer to this question already. Regardless, the answer is no. Before people even play D&D, they usually know that the players should make their own characters 
and have the lion's share of control over them. Which is why I won't hesitate to say that this DM is certified garbage, and should also stop DMing for now at least. I only say that because he's not making mistakes, he's being very intentional. The difference between a bad DM and a mistaken DM is when they find out that they're hurting the game, the wrong DM will try to correct themselves. The bad DM doesn't care because a quality game was not his intention. I am the only girl in this group and the youngest, and I don't particularly feel comfortable continuing with this DM. But I've come to really be passionate about D&D. We've already started a new campaign with a new DM, but they are still part of the group. The DM has stopped and restarted campaigns, but it's always the exact same issue that I've already described. Their character becomes a mother figure, or tries to siblingify my partner's character, and often forces me to sit out extreme combat to make camp for the other players. The DM has been well established at this point as a bad DM, but if that wasn't enough, this is the final post about this same DM. I wasn't 100% sure about making a video about this guy, but my mind was changed after this story. Roll post. A few weeks ago, my partner and I both made posts regarding issues we faced with an individual who was our forever DM. We have played with him as our dungeon master and as a player since we started playing TTRPGs as he had been the one to originally invite us to the group. For simplicity's sake, I'll refer to the DM as Kyle and my partner as Eris. Kyle, a guy Eris and I worked with, invited us to his TTRPG group a little over a year ago now. Eris and I had created characters with the intent on forming a romantic subplot if the campaign carried on. We had told Kyle this as well and he seemed to like the idea. This quickly changed though as we noticed that Kyle was pushing our characters into a sibling-like relationship with him as the mother figure. His character would treat ours like children, forbid us from taking part in combat, and the like. This was the first instance of my partner and I avoiding conflict, as we believed this was normal behavior in a D&D game because we had no frame of reference. The game soon ended and we next played a one-shot run by Kyle. I was playing a new character while Eris played the same character, a druid. Due to a series of poor roles, Kyle made the decision that Eris's character now had PTSD due to several deaths that she had inadvertently caused. This, while I understand is fairly common and not the worst thing a DM has ever done, is relevant later. I'm actually going to step in and say no. This is definitely not common. It's pretty rare for a DM to inflict a permanent wound on a character. We actually just covered that in our last video, oddly enough. But the DM making someone develop a mental health condition is actually far worse. It's one thing for the DM to say, your arms are gone and need to be replaced. That would suck if the DM just threw it at you as a surprise. But it could actually be a pretty fun plot point. The player could spend a session learning to do everything with their feet. And when they get their arms back, they can get a cool leg buff like kicks or movement speed. But the DM callously pinning mental health conditions on your character is pretty much never okay. Like, imagine if the DM made a player develop ADHD. Alright, let's start the quest. No, you don't. Why? Your character has ADHD now. But I want to go on the adventure. Okay, your character wants to go on an adventure and heroically quests to bed to do nothing. I really hate you. I'm all for a good surprise handicap on the players, but mental issues are probably the worst thing the DM can force in because they influence your behavior, actions, and personality, which are the only parts of the game the players really control. We next played another one-shot run by him. In this session, I played a third new character who went from the heroic lawman I wanted him to be to a lecher who would sleep with anything that moved. 
The reason? Kyle had decided to turn a comment I made in character about knowing what goes on in the town's brothel into confirmation that my PC had used it several times. I laughed this off as a joke. Kyle took this behavior further. This third campaign was a continuation of his first one-shot, set 100 years later. I decided to play a character almost identical to the one from the one-shot, and Eris decided to play her original character, but older. The DM stated after the game had been going on for a couple weeks that after 100 years, Eris's character still suffered from PTSD from the previous game. Her actions had caused the enslavement of elves, her character was a wood elf, and the criminalization of homosexuality because of a low birth rate in the kingdom we are adventuring in. Immediately, we found that he was, once again, trying to force our characters into a sibling relationship with each other. We had no intention of making them a couple at the start of the campaign. He accomplished this by using a homebrew god to become a mother figure to our characters again, with no chance of avoiding it as she would repeatedly remove us from wherever on the material plane we were and place us in her own realm. To combat this unwanted change to our dynamic, we had our characters get married so that he couldn't keep forcing the relationship he wanted on them. This didn't work, as he later gave me news that my character's father said I have a half-sister that he had in an affair whose name was suspiciously similar to Eris' character. I flat out denied this letter and told him no. In retrospect, I should have continued to question his behavior, but I didn't. He ended the game shortly after due to burnout. We next played a game with all of us as players. He was playing his homebrew god, but as a mortal artificer. This game did not last long. It lasted approximately six sessions, but throughout all of them, Kyle would repeatedly try to force my partner and my characters into a sibling-like relationship with his goddess NPC once again in a motherly role. Eris and I would often be removed by Kyle's character from roleplay moments as we had been quote misbehaving and the same would go for combat. We once again played one of Kyle's one shots after that campaign had ended. The only significant event of this game was Eris attempting to seduce an NPC for a ride in their carriage hoping it would just be described as a bit of Eris flirting with her. But Kyle took the description away and decided the NPC was now head over heels for Eris's character. And after a couple of in-game days traveling together, they were now in a common law marriage, blessed by his returning homebrew god. This game was transformed into a full campaign, and Eris had stated early on that her character was straight, as Kyle liked to know what he could throw at our characters. The session ended not long after this, but the campaign after is when everything came to an unexpected end. We all know that this one shot only became a campaign because he managed to technically get Eris into a marriage with one of his NPCs, right? Which I'm pretty sure is a long-term goal of his, given how hard he tries to friendzone her actual boyfriend. But I find this story so uniquely interesting, because even the details that OP leaves out contribute to the story to paint a fuller picture. I bet that the other players are really great, and roleplaying with them is a blast, and that the DM is actually pretty skilled outside of his obsession with Eris. But notice that I said skilled and not good, because at no point in any of the posts do they criticize the way he runs combat, the actual plot of the campaign, or his DMing style. In fact, it works well enough to keep them coming back for multiple campaigns over the course of what I'm estimating is a minimum of several months. But if we take the events in this story, sprinkle them throughout several months, maybe close to a year, but everything between those events was pretty great, they probably didn't feel as bad about it, but still, I think that even if all of this is true, and even if the DM is very skilled, that actually makes him a far worse DM. Because being a bad DM is not making mistakes, 
being a bad DM is intentionally hurting the game and your friends. It means he knows full well how to run a good game, but deliberately chooses not to, because you can't run a good game while also putting in unwanted fetish content and crushing on your friend's girlfriend. This is all an extrapolation of facts. We don't actually know if any of this is true, but this is where the signs are pointing. Anyways, we're in the endgame now. Roll post. The final nail in the coffin was our most recent campaign with him that lasted the better part of a year. In this game, to avoid any of the previous issues we had, we decided to play a married couple straight from the get-go. Throughout this campaign, we had the usual issues, where Eris' character would be forced into situations where she was excluded from combat, she was handed a ladle by a group of ranch hands as, because she was a woman, she was to make camp. The DM would often attempt to make my character seem like an adulterer by having several NPCs flirt with my character or have one walk past and describe my character staring at their bodies. Each time this happened, I had to remind him that my character was completely in love and loyal and dedicated to Eris's character. So this kind of thing is something my character would never do. But the absolute kicker of it all is Kyle decided to make Eris' character pregnant. Not because of her husband, but through the spiritual intervention of her character's ancestors. Every session she would have to contend with symptoms of her pregnancy, from morning sickness to irritability. She would be forced to sit out events as she was pregnant and couldn't harm the baby. She would often be given armor or clothes that were revealing, even when we would specifically look for something that was practical and not sexy. And he made sure to have her roll often to see how badly the symptoms hit her that day. Whenever we couldn't attend a session, he would have our absence explained away by her using a spell to attack me as I had done something to annoy her. Neither of us spoke about how uncomfortable the pregnancy subplot made us, as we both believed the other was fine with it. But the more uncomfortable we got, the more sessions we missed, the more he had her character attack me, but we enjoyed playing with the other two players at the table, both of which we now know have been beaten down by Kyle's issues and now no longer question them to avoid conflict. Eventually, we both learned that neither of us wanted this plot, so I messaged Kyle about ending it. He didn't respond until I saw him at work. He said that he could make it work in the story, but we would have to roll high or low for an ending. We had skipped a week because we were both sick, but when we returned, we found out Kyle had killed off our friend's character by having him, a lawful good character, go on a rampage possessed by a demon, killing hundreds of people, eventually dying from the guilt. This was the time to end the pregnancy plot. Come the next session, Eris rolled as he asked, and the outcome was low. So Kyle began to describe a horrible miscarriage. Eris was forced into a spirit realm surrounded by her ancestors, all staring at her angrily. Her character's mother stood in front of her, reached into her stomach, and pulled out a hard lump of coal. When Eris woke up, she was no longer pregnant, her horns, because she's a tiefling, were missing, and she could no longer use her druidic magic, and her face was branded. The brand apparently meant that any tribal tiefling we came across had the right to kill her on the spot. She felt like she was being punished for not wanting to have his baby. Well, that's because she is. She doesn't feel it, she knows it. The DM is pissy because he's tried for multiple campaigns spanning the course of at least most of a year to place his pregnancy fetish on her, only to have it deflected right when he thought he was finally getting close. So, he's raging. I doubt he thought this through so much as he's just expressing how mad he is. We didn't just up and leave because we didn't want to cause a scene and stop playing with the friends that we made at the table. Our issue was with Kyle and not them. This is when we decided to retire the characters. We didn't want to play them if we would have to fight off everyone we knew and loved, so we rolled new characters. 
explaining that our married couple went off on a journey to restore Eris's powers and honor. At work a few days later, Kyle told me that he was no longer having fun in the campaign and wanted to end it. He then told me that he had written an ending for our characters that we retired. At this point, I was just fed up with him and told him that I didn't want to know. He then told me that he planned for my character to drown to death, being hit with a tidal wave spell one too many times, by his wife. I was horrified and just walked away. The next day, he told me that he changed his mind and that it wouldn't happen. Eris and I did not attend that next session, but we heard from our friends that he did indeed kill off my character that way. Does this not genuinely creep anybody else out? First, he keeps trying to drive a wedge between OP and his girlfriend. Then, when that doesn't work, he tells OP about how he kills off his character, even though OP didn't want to know and it wasn't even a game setting. He then goes on to lie about it. This is seriously creepy behavior, and I don't blame OP for walking away terrified. I was furious and ready to cut off all contact with him outside of work. But that is when we heard from another friend in the group that Kyle had been spreading rumors about us, that we have an unhealthy relationship and that I'm too dependent on her, and that he was sick and tired of changing his plans because I specifically had a problem with his story. Eris later confronted him, and we are now no longer in contact. At work, we have not spoken to each other. Eris and I still attend the group, but Kyle is no longer welcome in it after we raise these concerns with the others. I like how he can push his weird pregnancy kink on her, marry his NPC to her, then handle her brutally when she's not into it, and the friend group is still mostly intact. It's when Kyle starts spreading rumors and being jealous that they all collectively kick him out. Like, they can handle weird fetish guys who are bad at running games, but the second that same negative energy starts leaking into the real world, it's on. As for the DM, he could be great, but he clearly doesn't want that. He's acting like somebody who has a lot of personal issues that he should work on before trying to DM again. Anyways, if you found this video as entertaining as I did, Here's one just like it in the middle of the screen. It's one of my most popular videos, and if you watch it, you'll probably see why. Anyways, till next time.